right here at the base of this of this piston this is all usable stroke but as you can see it's filthy because it's not being used so what happened was when I took this into the mechanic he had his worker do it and the worker thought it would be great to put this bottom hinge inside the frame rail they cut open my frame rail and they lowered this down in there because it had to go in straight okay and then they bolted it in really nicely but this piston is starting out extended to two already two inches okay that two inches right there translates to like six inches right there okay uh, I mean as you can see this hinge if you actually get down here it's starting there the hinge is there when it should be here okay that's a six inch difference okay to the middle of this block approximately I'm guessing that plate probably is around four inches big okay so if that plate is on top of here yeah might need to be grinded might need to be recessed might need a bracket welded on the outside of this you can see that the dump angle on this isn't very high you would want at least a, a 45 degree angle and I'm pretty sure that that's not if that is it's still not enough um, and so because of where this is on the on the truck bed you have reduced the amount of lift by quite a lot um, and so that needs to be cut open again unbolted lifted up somehow only God knows how I don't know how I'm gonna do it lift it up and then weld it on the top of the framework there First thing I have to do here is so important. Um, this dump has to be set up so that it will not fall, no matter what. So the uh, the brace that goes to the bottom hinge is three and a half inches tall, and the blocks that hold up this bed are less than that. Which means that if I put it up on top of the frame rail. Uh, it's going to be too tall. 88, 89, 90 inches. Now I have to cut off these blocks that are in my way. Ah! So here's what I got so far. Should never do this, cutting on a frame rail, it's not good. But we're cutting there and then we're gonna go along here. And then that will give room because that thing comes all the way out to here, that, uh, that uh, hinge. So these are just basically a rectangle with a cylinder coming out of it that fits inside that. So really those could come out freely and extend to any length, but that tube is still three and a half inches in diameter. So it's got to be recessed into this area right here. Actually, it's got to be recessed into the exact spot where it is now, which is centered below the upper hinge.
Alright, so I'm done grinding out these pockets. This is where they had it cut out and re, re welded on. So we're going to remove that. I'm probably going to have to attach a uh, uh, strap to that top hinge right there. And we'll just go straight down to that one. And we'll sort of put lift pressure on it when we unbolt that. I'm guessing this whole thing is going to rock back that way. So I might have another one here going to there with a piece of rope that I could release and then just release it enough and then raise it with the with the ratchet into place probably is what I'll do. At this point I have a uh, ratchet strap doubled up here for leverage to help me lift that. I'll probably need a second ratchet strap. Um, the bolts are out, four bolts there. However, you know, hopefully it would never be welded in there. It should never be welded in there. Only a fool would do that. Uh, and then I have a rope that goes, just because this whole assembly actually Gravity wants it to swing that way, so I'm going to go ahead and tie it there so when it swings, I can release it using that. Okay, so... I've got this area grinded. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna, since I have a cutout right here, that's gonna give me my drop that I need uh, to fit this too large piece, which is three and a half inches, inside that three inch space, which is the height of those blocks. And the hinges were set at that space because all these blocks could have been changed to accommodate that, but that was not done. So, um, I'm just going to have to weld a plate here and then I'm going to have four holes drilled in it to locate that. It's going to be exactly above where these holes are. Um, and so since that's already drilled, that makes it a hitch to mark and drill everything. And then I've got some thin stock that I can use to try to fix the spacing from side to side because what they did is they cut this brace and extend, or actually they probably compressed it, but they either compressed it or extended it. Um, when they cut that and reattached it and uh, <laughs> that brace I'm, I'm not gonna mess with taking that brace off because these pins have to be sh these uh, right here have to be very straight to each other or they'll get broken off of this plate and that already happened once and the guy did a really sloppy job welding it back so I don't want to mess with the brace I think it's good the way it is I'm just gonna use spacers in here to try to get fill in this gap because there's gonna be a, a nice big gap there this uh, this will actually be somewhere it'll just be the thickness of those two pieces of metal essentially that I'll have to just wedge in here and when I bolt it it'll just draw it'll draw it in I have this little situation where um, my my uh, welding outlet my, is set up on the inside part of the shop and my uh, welder power cord plus my uh, cables are not long enough to reach what I need to weld outside. So fortunately for me the way the guy had it set up was uh, this outer plug was for his welder and the inner plug over there was for his air compressor but for my purposes of my welder I set up the wrong plug, possibly, not really sure, but I'm going to swap these two plugs and because I know those both have the same power running to them and I'll run my welder up this outlet and then I'll be able to reach outside to weld. Alright, it's time to start welding. I have 
this bar going from one of the, the three inch supports to the other one so I know how high it should be and I want the uh, the brace for that uh, piston to be just uh, a touch lower so I just gave it I don't know but it's probably an eighth of an inch perhaps uh, and I my angle iron is welded on here um, that I'm gonna use on this side I'll use a piece of flat stock on the other side uh, this will all operate as one solid unit this actually because it goes across like that uh, it's a it's a rigid structure so it shouldn't need a lot of love to get it to go where it needs to go um, this is a little bit crooked because it goes down to that side but I have to attach this I have to drill holes to achieve the next step in the process so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this and drill the holes and then we'll get one of those bolts lined up As you can see, now the hinge, uh, the bottom hinge is the, as high as it can be. Now, all pistons are probably not the same stroke, but this piston needed the full stroke. And so I raised this up and I used washers because it was like, I would have had to cut plates and then drill holes and then relocate them and then these things weren't exact anyway so I couldn't put, that piece there was bent from the end from when they originally installed it and they did it wrong so it broke, it self-destructed and they had to re-weld it back and then cut, cut that uh, brace and then re-weld that and it barely works as it is so I haven't messed with the brace at all even though I could have. I should have moved this in more. That gap is too wide. I don't know how long that goes in there, how far that goes in there, but we're gonna try lowering this now, and I'm gonna watch this hose right here and see if it gets pinched, and if it does, it's not long enough uh, to go from under. So I'm gonna have to go get another hose made. It's what I get for trusting other people to do my work, but I had to do it, I had to get done, so um, let's try to lower this bad boy and see what happens.
YouTube. Got into this job today. Not really knowing exactly how it was going to go. Um, I kind of halfway thought it would end up with me pinned under that bed. Um, you know, I, don't, I was originally going to weld uh, steel supports from, you know, from the truck bed to the frame. But uh, <laughs> I'm not that great of a welder. I would have had to cut off the welds uh, after I was done and they might not have held and trusting a weld when you're not that good of a welder it probably isn't always a great idea. So the pipe was out here on the property. It was galvanized. I didn't want to weld on galvanized if I could help it because that's not good for you. It makes a vapor. You know, it's fun being able to do a job by yourself and take credit for it. The mechanic who who, ha who I went to, you know, he was depending on a guy that didn't really know what he was doing and like any situation when you're relying on a worker to do a good job, it could turn out any way. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, I think the mechanic himself, if he did it, it would have been way better, but he tr trusted someone to do it the right way and they didn't do any of the necessary steps to make sure that the job was done right. Um, so I, I haven't tested it out because I'm going to do it on a job. I have tree jobs lined up right now where ch I'm going to have chips in the back of the truck and I'll be able to dump it. But I wish I had a video of us ramming the truck to try to make the chips come out. You had to ram it repeatedly over and over and over. Hit the brakes, hit the gas, hit the brakes. And it's, it's a manual, so it's not that good on the clutch either. And uh, we... You know, we've been making do, but it was wrong, and I was meaning to get it done, and the mechanic was going to do it for me, um, and he uh, just wasn't available, you know. It's kind of, it's going to be months before he's available, and then if I do drop off the truck, the guy's not going to work on it that day anyway. It never goes that way. It never goes the way you want it to. So, um, I, I feel pretty good about the day, even though... Truthfully, it, it, it could still fail. I mean, the thing could fall apart. The hinges could break. Um, they, they could pop off their welds. Uh, my error of my ways would show at that point in time. I try to be pretty thorough, but it's hard to get everything, uh, especially when you're like me. You're basically just welding it to make it work. It has really little to do with a, a true qualified skill set. Uh, it has more to do with um, just the desperate need of having to do something. And, uh, you know, it's always worked out thus far. Oh, <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. Mwah. It always seems to work out. You know, my little welding projects, they work out very well. So uh, even though I'm not an awesome welder, um, it helps to try to have a cool head and take the time. And not today I couldn't do my tree job because... Uh, the tree job I wanted to do next, which was next in, li in the lineup, um, is a, uh, oh, it had stump grinding, and so the, the bobcat guy came over and <laughs> did my, uh, took my machine from me to put the electrical on for stump grinding. So um, I, I don't have the, the machine ready for stump grinding anyway, and I don't really see the need to go to a job site more than once. Uh, it's just a waste of fuel and everything. So um, we uh, will get to it when we have the stump grinder, you know, and hopefully I'll have the machine back today or tomorrow. But uh, you are just a sucker, aren't you? So uh, anyway, that's a uh, warning of what not to do too. Um, you know, when you're putting a dump on, on a truck, you gotta know the location of where that scissor needs to be in relation to itself. I mean, that, that uh, that piston should be all the way in when the d dump is down. And I mean, you could test that out. If you're in a shop with a lift, there's really no excuse. You, you can tack weld the hinges and raise and lower that thing to your heart's content and locate the scissor and everything. All It can all be done with tack welds very neatly. And there's no need to create a problem like this. It's it's totally unnecessary and it shouldn't have been done to start with. So, um, but I have learned a valuable lesson about this and obviously I would have done it all myself if I had a lift, but I couldn't put that bed onto the actual truck. 
it probably would have been better to just take the trucks there to the shop and have it transferred over and then install it myself once that was transferred over. But uh, not all shops are cool like that. And uh, you know, to the mechanic's credit, he uh, you know he's always been willing to make right on stuff. It just takes a long time to do. And uh, also, um, he always talks to me when I have a mechanical issue I need advice on. Always takes a couple minutes and chats with me on it. He doesn't uh, doesn't leave me hanging or tell me you know bring it in. But a lot of people would tell you to just bring it in instead of saying you know this is what I would do or this is what you could check. And uh, it's more help to me to be helped as a mechanic myself than to be told that I can pay money and have work done. Because uh, in the end, I'll probably be the guy that can do almost all my own work, provided I have the time. And uh, obviously, the goal is to have enough time to do the work that needs to be done. There's never enough time when, especially in the busy season like this, it's, uh, it's go, 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 but we started having like some chilly weather and it's kind of cloudy right now. It was cloudy yesterday and people don't really notice outdoor stuff as much when it's crappy weather. Um, people are more onto that when the, when the weather's real nice and so like if they're out mowing their grass or they come outside and it's just gorgeous and they want to go to Starbucks and they're talking. I don't really know what drives people to, to call tree guys more when the weather is nice. It's a very strange phenomenon. But it's a real thing, and I've noticed it. Uh, maybe it's an Illinois thing. I don't know. Um, but your outdoor gets more attention when it's nice because people like to come outside when it's nice. And so, and then they go out and they look, and they're, oh my goodness, there's a problem, there's a thing, this or that. Or the wife notices, because that is a fact that women come out more when the weather's nice. And uh, you, you, if anybody's anybody who's a man has probably noticed that by now. And, uh, you know, there's even that one song where he's like, pretty girls are everywhere. Because <laughs> the, when the weather's nice, it's a known fact that there's more women out. And so maybe it's the women that see the tree branches and they tell their husbands or their man or whatever, and he has to call or they call or whatever. Whoever cares most calls and says, you know, uh, we need tree service. But in any case, we'll be busy with tree service soon. And this whole... I think it's dumping a good extra, you know, if you go from the hinge, the hinge is six inches higher, a true, genuine, actual six inches. So you're six inches here, and then the at the high point of the bed, you're even higher. You could be a foot higher or something like that. But I could definitely see a difference in the angle. It's a little bit longer of a stroke going up, you could tell. And uh, so hopefully now my loads will come out a little bit better. Um, you know, uh, if not, you know, we might have needed to even relocate that uh, hinge back just a little bit farther but it's already in now and I'm not changing it after this so uh, we'll just keep rocking it if, it if it doesn't work now if you're welding and grinding like me I, I wish you the best of luck and be safe out there all right take care YouTube